Hey everybody, this is Amanda, and today we are going to be making Lavender Breeze Cold Process Soap. This is the fourth soap in my spring collection. Mostly with my spring collection, I'm going to be doing a lot of lavender soaps and just a lot of soaps that get you cheery, happy, uplifting. It's spring. The sun is coming out. Everything's going to be in full bloom, and it's just one of the most exciting times of the year for me. So we're going to jump right in. In this bucket, I have all of my butters and oils. I've got shea butter, coconut oil, olive oil, sunflower oil, and a couple of others. I've also added some organic coconut milk powder and kaolin clay. I did mix up the kaolin clay and coconut milk prior to the video. So what we're going to do now is add in our lye solution and get this started. We're about to blender, get any kind of air bubbles out, and then here we go. I'm just going to blend this up on low until I hit a very, very, very light trace. Next, I am going to blend in my fragrance oil by hand. Again, this is a lavender fragrance oil that I get from Nature's Fragrances. And because I've never used this before, I don't want to take a stick blender to mix it all in right now. So I'm just going to stir it in by hand, see how it reacts, and then we can split it off and get our colors. So I'm using four colors today. All of them are from Nurture Soap. I've got Brandy's Blue Mica, Purple Vibrance, and Laurel Green Mica. Now one of the things I did is I did take the Purple Vibrance and I mixed it with a little bit of titanium dioxide so that I could get more of a light purple lavender color. So here I'm just going to try my best to split these off as evenly as possible. I'm going to scrape out and get as much of this soap out of this big container as we can. Just don't want any of this going to waste and it smells amazing it's mostly lavender but it's not overpowering it's not the lavender like you're used to you know it's got a little bit of an earthy tone to it a lot of people love the calming effects of lavender but the scent is not for everybody okay, so now we're going to mix in our colors here is the brandy's blue This one is our Purple Vibrance mixed with a little bit of Titanium Dioxide to give us that beautiful lavender. We've got the Laurel Green. and then the Purple Vibrance. Okay, so I am going to just quickly give these a mix and get all those colors incorporated. We're going to start with the lightest color and work our way up to the darkest. So now it is time to mix into our mold, and I'm just going to start with a simple drop swirl and then see what I want to do from there. Okay, so towards the end there, you could see that there was, the batter was just getting really 
thick, so I had to start plopping it in. So we are going to change our design. I'm going to tap this down. Get everything settled, try to get the air bubbles out, even everything up in here. And then what I'm going to do, since there was not a lot of time to work on the swirls, is I'm just going to take and I'm going to create my own swirls with a bamboo skewer. And not too much. You don't want to muddle up your soap and make it change colors. Just give it some, give it some of your own swirls. Okay, then we're going to smack this down again. And now it's time to get the top designed. Now normally I just take and I put, you know, the leftover soap batter and give it some cute swirls and call it a day. But I have completely fallen in love with doing an additional mica drizzle. So I take what was left over in my little cups that I used to mix the original colorant in, and I just give it a couple of drops on the top of the soap. It turns out amazing. You've got the sparkle that sometimes soaponification of the soap takes away, and it just ends up so gorgeous. You've got that little extra shimmer, and it really just, it makes your soap so pretty on the tops. I know it's the top and that's not what matters, but it's just so pretty. So I'm just going to continue getting all the rest of this soap out of my containers. And then we will do the swirl and the extra mica. we've got all of our colors in. I'm going to kind of try to clean up a little bit of this mess so that when I'm smacking everything down, I'm not making even bigger messes. You know, I've got kids for that. All right, so we're just going to give this a quick smack down, get everything leveled out, then we're going to do our first swirl. Okay, this is not wanting to even out, so that is very thick. So we're just going to kind of try to take and blend all of these colors and you know I might not even want to do that little extra Michael mica on the top it just looks pretty nice right now and as you can see the greens are kind of muted it's typical in cold process soap um, that you get more of a muted color with the greens and then once it goes through saponification it does definitely brighten back up and you get that lovely green color that you first started with and you were expecting. So I think we're just going to kind of keep the extra Michael mica drizzle at a minimum just to add a little bit of pop of color to the tops of these. Just a couple drops of each color kind of liven the tops up a little bit if I've got any left in my cup here. There's no rhyme or reason when you're adding you know, the end of your soaps on the top, or even in my case, doing this little mica drizzle. Um, just kind of try to put it in open spots and hope for the best. For this part, I'm just going to go very lightly on the top of the soap so I don't really mess up too much of that original swirl. I kind of just want to go back over it with this mica drizzle and just get those colors kind of mixed in, blended, and give it that extra pop of color on the top. I'm 
like I said, when I do the swirls, there's no rhyme or reason. I just don't want too much of one color in one spot, and so I kind of go back and swirl it where it needs to be swirled to get those colors broken up and distributed a little bit more. And then we're just going to spritz the top with rubbing alcohol. All this does is helps prevent soda ash. It's just a light little ash that covers the top of soaps. Not harmful. It just, sometimes it muddles the color. It mutes them quite a bit. So you just want to try to prevent it as much as possible. Some soaps, it definitely looks good with the ash on top. But for this soap, I really want this whole spring collection to just be bright and vibrant and so sweet. Ring. Okay, and then in about 48 to 72 hours, I will be back to cut this into bars.